Hi there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. In the course of human history, 550 people have left the safe embrace of our disc world and ventured into the cosmos. Out of those 550 people, only 228 of them have done spacewalks. It's perhaps one of the most challenging and amazing experiences any human being on this planet can have. Leaving the relative safety of a spacecraft and entering vacuum only in a thin pressurized suit, hurling through space at 17,000 miles per hour, this is not an activity for the faint at heart. Which is why the spacewalk is usually one of the most intense parts of any space-related sci-fi film. Unfortunately, Hollywood, as usual, goes over the top and doesn't really portray it realistically. Today we'll be taking a look at some famous spacewalk scenes that occurred in recent movies, and we're going to break down just how realistic they are and how well they're done. In the film Ad Astra, Brad Pitt must leave the Lima project, a ship stuck in a decaying orbit around Neptune, and transfer back to his own spaceship so that he can return home. Fortunately, the small module he had taken to get to the Lima project has now been damaged beyond repair. His only option now is to go EVA and launch himself at a ship using a spinning comms antenna for propulsion. To make matters worse, his ship is on the other side of Neptune's ring, so he secures a piece of the ship's hull and uses it as a shield to protect him from all the dust and rocks he will have to fly through. So why is this scene so ridiculous? Well, out of the 228 spacewalks that we have done, only seven of them were done untethered. And all seven individuals wore a manned maneuvering unit, or the Soviet equivalent, which is basically a backpack full of pressurized gas used as thrust. None of these seven individuals ventured more than 100 meters or so from their spacecraft. So what Brad Pitt must do in this scenario is in completely uncharted territory. He must align himself with another ship on a different orbit going at a different speed and somehow manually figure out a way to get the right trajectory. While it is possible to transfer orbits with a module with a navigation computer, calculating that same trajectory manually with a backpack thruster seems pretty much impossible. Now, many of Neptune's rings have a depth of less than half a kilometer, so it is possible for Brad Pitt to travel a few kilometers in an EVA suit using a backpack thruster. The problem is the debris in the rings are probably moving faster than a bullet from a gun which means that even if the smallest projectile struck Brad Pitt's shield, it would probably penetrate it. It should also be noted that Neptune's rings are probably a lot less densely packed than what we see in this scene. Nonetheless, the danger of hitting something is still very high. Now, once Brad Pitt makes it through the ring, he somehow matches trajectory with his own ship, but he really doesn't slow down at all on his approach. There's no attempt to match orbital speed and decelerate with the thrusters, and judging by how fast he collides into his own ship, the force of that impact would have mostly knocked him out or at least done severe damage to his body. It's very unlikely that Brad Pitt would have been able to hold on to his starship. Gravity opens up with the crew of the fictional space shuttle Explorer performing an EVA mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. While two crew members are tethered and focused on the job at hand and moving mostly with care and precision, George Clooney is using some type of new and experimental maneuvering device that he calls a jetpack and just flying around without much purpose, filling up the comms channels with personal stories and jokes. Not only are spacewalks pretty rare occurrences in the history of space travel, they are also one of the most highly orchestrated and planned maneuvers an astronaut can take part in. The planning of some of the more complicated EVA procedures can take weeks, if not months, if not years. The planning could even include mock walkthroughs inside of a swimming pool so that astronauts can practice everything from which procedure they're going to perform in which order to which hand they will use on which support when they exit a craft. And as we mentioned before, untethered EVAs are even more rare. And although George Clooney is testing an experimental jet pack, it's most likely that the engineers at NASA would give him very strict mission parameters and procedures that he would have to go through to test things out. He wouldn't just be flying around randomly, and most likely his crew would be standing there spotting him and watching him and making sure that he's matching the uh, movement of the space shuttle so he doesn't just fly away. Again, a very dangerous procedure. And while astronauts definitely are interesting people with personalities of their own, I doubt an astronaut would act the way George Clooney does and be so nonchalant on the comms channels while performing one of the more stressful maneuvers in space travel. An interesting side note is that this fictional scene we see here in Gravity is most likely based on a series of real service missions to the Hubble telescope, which were considered some of the most complicated EVA missions ever done. 
The reality is that when compared to Hollywood's version of EVA, real EVA missions are going to seem a lot less interesting and a bit boring even. A part of this is because the massive amount of planning that goes into each one of these missions are designed specifically to minimize risk. However, in the past there have been unplanned EVAs done by astronauts. In 1985, the Space Shuttle Discovery was attempting to release a satellite from its shuttle bay, but the booster rockets attached to it failed to fire. And so astronauts Jeff Hoffman and David Griggs had to exit the shuttle and manually detach the satellite. The mission originally did not call for any EVA procedures and neither astronaut had much EVA experience or training, but luckily that mission was successful. The recently released Netflix TV show Away does a much better job of showing the tension surrounding an EVA mission. When one of the solar panel arrays on the Atlas fails to deploy, two astronauts debark on an EVA mission and attempt to dislodge it. It's quite a simple mission. The astronauts scale the length of the ship and one astronaut momentarily untethers herself in order to reach the rear of the solar panel array and then safely return. While this EVA procedure might seem boring compared to Brad Pitt flying through the rings of Neptune, the tension is extremely high amongst the crew and ground control, especially after one of the astronauts untethers herself in a dangerous transfer maneuver. Now, critics of this show have said that there is way too much drama for incidents that don't really seem that dramatic in the first place like the failure of a water system or the EVA mission we talked about. But those same critics have probably also been conditioned to Hollywood's version of space travel, which just isn't real. The reality is even the simplest EVA missions are full of danger and can be very tense and terrifying for everyone involved. At the end of Matt Damon's exile on Mars because he was such a dick in Interstellar, the Hermes spacecraft returns to Mars in order to save his very privileged and egotistical behind. The thing is, I'm selfish. I, I want all the memorials back home to be about me. Matt Damon selfishly decided to take the Mars Ascent vehicle into orbit for a rendezvous. This Matt vehicle was supposed to be used by the next Martian mission, but of course, Matt Damon can only think about himself and his own survival. Since the Hermes is flying way too fast to enter a near orbit to Mars, Matt Damon is forced to strip out as many components from the MAV as possible in order to make it light enough to reach higher altitudes. This includes removing the control surfaces, the seats, the windows, and even nose cone, and placing a parachute over the top. Now, we're not going to spend too much time talking about how unrealistic the scene is. The explanation in the film is that the atmosphere on Mars is extremely thin, so aerodynamics all the sun does not uh, factor in when you're launching a rocket. That's just not rocket science, guys. I mean, out of the 40 or so Martian landings attempted, two-thirds of them were failures, so this is a very tricky procedure, landing or leaving. But what follows this crazy launch is even crazier. You see, even with the modifications to the MAV, it's unable to reach the Hermes, so Matt Damon must perform an EVA and attempt to reach the Hermes in his suit. But without any propulsion, Matt Damon decides to cut a hole in the glove of his suit and use the escaping oxygen as propulsion. Not only would it be extremely hard to properly aim yourself with one source of propulsion, if there is a breach in your glove, the suction would most likely pull your finger into it and plug it relatively quickly. It would be extremely hard to use this as a viable method of EVA travel. Now, Sandra Bullock in Gravity tries an alternative method of propulsion by using a fire extinguisher. This might be slightly more effective than the hole in glove method, but it's also not a viable replacement for an MMU. I guess the whole point of this video was to show you just how dangerous spacewalks are. Um, you know, whenever an astronaut leaves his ship or her ship, it is an extremely tense moment and Hollywood kind of cheapens it. Well, they cheapen everything if you really think about it. But in the future, as we see more and more astronauts go on these missions, we should have that appreciation. They are risking their lives out there for hopefully the betterment of all of humanity. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.